स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So this module you see it is another naturally occurring material wood. You all know wood, what it is, we get it from trees and all other along with it we see engineered wood and bamboo. So from wood a lot of wood like materials or similar kind of materials are made from as a byproduct from wood industry and also we see bamboo which all which had use in our system as a support material as a structural material are also being used as a building material nowadays wood what is the beauty of it it is naturally occurring got from trees it is a insulator thermal insulator and it is light in weight compared to other building materials like maybe brick or maybe stone which we have already covered but what is the drawback in it it is an organic product how is it made how do we get brick how do we get wood sorry what are the classifications of the different types of wood and how do we process it to get it appropriate for the building industry are to be discussed in this particular lecture. So, if we look into what is wood, it is the hard fibrous organic item formed from the mature tree after being processed. So, there are lots of carriers of water bundles going from the root transporting water and minerals to the leaves. As you all know these are called xylems. Xylems and phloems actually form the conducting system of a live tree and these are fibrous. These are fibers moving together and they as a whole form a bundle which also has strength. It gives strength to the tree, tree can move, sway and it can face lateral forces and still again when it is in the form of wood processed, it behaves in the same way. So, wood can take both compression when it is subjected to load from the top as well as if you hold it, if you allow to span it rest it between two walls support walls and you can allow any kind of movement on top of it. The bundles inside it which are continuous help in taking the tensile load. So, wood can be used as a spanning material, wood can be used as a compressive material. So, it can be used as a structural framework for making partition, partition walls which may be made, the infill may be made of plywood which is again another processed wood. So, different varieties of wood have been seen because it is a naturally occurring material, they grow in different ways and they have different characteristics and hence its use differs. Let us see some pictures. You see some big logs here. You see you cannot take huge logs, you cannot carry huge logs. So, they have been cut into a certain size and they will be transported later on as you can see in this picture. Here are some logs where you can see a human figure here where from you can understand what is the size of each. So, a tree 
the base the main major trunk is the usable part which you can get most of it yes the heavy branches they also can be converted to our usable wood so these are called logs which are taken from the site to prepare usable wood which would be helpful for our industry building industry you can see some more pictures here two more pictures here where you can see some knots some grains some patterns or lines which are going these are showing the grain how the xylems and phloems are moving how they were interrupted due to wind and it has eventually given such kind of knots yes they may be good they may be bad but they give a beautiful texture to the wood surface and seeing these lines seeing these knots even you can go for some identification criteria also also notice in this picture the color of these are very uniform but if you see this cross section it is little different you can see if you can faintly see some separate lines which you can distinguish some layers so maybe it will be much clearer in the next picture next discussion because we have different types of trees you see highlighted in red exogenous trees endogenous trees under exogenous trees we have the conifers and the deciduous the picture here in the top is a deciduous tree whereas picture here below it is the coniferous tree you can see the length the coniferous are long but not much in the dimension di diameter whereas the deciduous tree has a larger trunk size and shorter in length and if you see the coniferous which was seen in this picture are having pale color and they are actually soft wood pine cedar fir birch whereas deciduous cross sections if you see they are not so light in color they are little more brown and they are used mostly for engineering purpose so do the conifers are of no use no they can go for the furniture they can go for interior items coming to the endogenous trees they grow inward fibrous mass is seen in their longitudinal section so if you cut a bamboo slit like this you can see bamboo in the longer face you can see the see the fibers whereas the exogenous grows outward deciduous grows much larger than the conifers so you can get a layer long layer of wood in the deciduous variety exogenous tree grows year after year showing the different shades within it those are called the annual rings which is not much clearly seen in case of the coniferous trees endogenous trees have annual rings in the vertical direction so you can see at a particular time interval they have segments grown together so you see that bamboo tree is shown in the picture here and you can see that see that the segments growing at a certain period of time so let us try to see 
the section of an exogenous tree trunk. This is a schematic section where you see these are the lines which are called the medullary rays and you see concentric lines moving outward which are the annual rings and you can see there are different color shades. Gradually it is moving from deeper color to lighter color. The deeper color portion is called the heartwood, the core, whereas the lighter color portion is called the sapwood, and the entire thing is protected by the cambium layer, then the bust, and then the part, then, then the bark or the covering, the top coating. You see a dark portion at the center which is the dead cell which forms the pith. So these are the nomenclatures, this is a very schematic diagram showing very the basic of the exogenous tree and from here actually we get the wood after conversion. You cannot use this entire log for your purpose. It is not the entire tree trunk even which you can use because you have to transport it. So you have to remember you have to make it to sizes which can be carried by the transport vehicle and hence you have to reduce it into your desired dimension. So you need to convert that also. Now you see not all sections are uniform, they may be different in shapes. So when you are converting this to usable timber, you have to look into how the annual rings are arranged. And also with this section where you see everything perfect, there may be a lot of defects or unusable parts inside it which has happened due to natural weathering, natural conditions because of different growth and this is what you see when it is naturally or actually seen. So here one is having a lighter color, one is having a little deeper color but whatever it is the central part is darker and the outer part is lighter. So which one should we use for our work? It is the heartwood which we usually use. Sapwood is still in a life state which we usually try to avoid using particularly when it is for, for some structural purposes. So let us come to see the difference between softwood and hardwood which we were getting from the coniferous trees and the deciduous trees. As we understood the annual ring in case of coniferous trees the softwood it is distinct whereas in case of hardwood it is not so distinct. Color of softwood or the coniferous trees is light, that of hardwood is little dark. Density which is a reflection of weight, the softwoods are lighter in weight whereas the hardwoods are higher in weight or more weighy. Fire resistance, softwoods are poor whereas hardwoods give a get better resistance. The medullary rays are not so distinctly seen in case of case of conifers whereas they are distinct in case of hardwood. So sources I have already mentioned strength strong for direct pull and weak for resisting thirst or shear that is the case of softwoods whereas hardwoods are very good for both tension, compression, shear 
and any kind of engineering loads. Structure wise soft wood is bit resinous and can split away. So, it may split along its annular an, annual ring whereas, hard wood does not. That is why you see annual rings are distinct in case of soft wood whereas, in case of hard wood they are not so distinct. So, they are very similar kind they have gone through years and it has got transformed whereas, annual ring in case of soft wood are distinct and they split easily. Now, as we were talking of the heart wood and the sap wood, the sap wood is the outer part where the wood formed is from the live xylem which is light in color and as you had seen they are forming the outer part the inner part forms the heart wood. So, this portion is the heart wood whereas, this portion is the sap wood. So, age wise sap wood is younger young whereas, hard wood is old and because it is old it accumulates lots of tannins, oils which make it resistant to decay. It makes it resistant towards attacks of termites, towards attack of insects, growths they are strong and durable. So, which one we should we prefer the old matured portion which is called the hardwood. Yes, sapwood is also good, but yes, they can subject, they are subject to decay. Now, when we get some wood, what should we do? We see a number of trees and anyone is suitable for our purpose? No. You have to cut those trees which are rightly matured. So, age of the tree is very important and this process is called felling of tree. If you have a planned plantation where from you will take wood, then you know the age, you know the right age, you know the variety of plant, you know the climatic condition. So, based on that you make it convenient to cut when it is a dry season, when the sap movement is not happening and the age is just appropriate to get the wood out of it. After you get such trees, you need to season it as we had done it for stone. Seasoning is the process of keeping it exposed to the natural conditions such that it can get acquainted to that particular condition. Reducing the moisture content or the sap from the tree which was a life one to the average humidity of that particular region is the primary purpose of seasoning. What will this lead to? This will lead to less of shrinkage or expansion due to changing humidity or changing weather condition and this will lead to less of warping. This warping term I have already discussed when we were doing bricks. So, change of dimension leading to convex or convex, convex or concave surfaces. So, the log which is straight would not warp or bend unevenly or it may not have 
uneven expansion. It remains straight and rigid to its form. Seasoning also increases the strength, durability and workability. What does workability mean here? Workability means cutting of the log. You can work on it if it does not have more of sap in it. It also reduces splitting off. So, splitting against the annual ring is a very common phenomena if it is not properly seasoned. And attack by decaying items that is the, the termites, the insects, the microbes, the bacterial growth, the algae fungi, moss growing on it, these things get lessened and you can make it suitable for putting or applying paint. Through seasoning, you also control or reduce the weight of the mass. After the process of seasoning, we need to convert it to timber. So, this wood which we had obtained after felling of tree and after seasoning, we convert it to usable form, suitable sections for use. So, suitable section is not as per I desire or you desire. It is to be found out whichever portion is really being usable. After identifying, you have to use machines, you have to take help of machines because such huge logs cannot be worked by one or two persons by human labor. So, you have to use machines to split it into two halves or into four halves or tangentially. So, there are various methods of conversion which we will try to cover in our next lesson. After converting, we need to know how to preserve the timber because preservation of this timber increases its life. It makes it durable. Some preservation techniques may be external. Painting is a preservation technique, but sometimes preservation may be required to be done from inside also. So, this preservation process protects this natural resource from attacks of fungi, insect, microbes, termites, etc. Yes, the term the term preservation refers to when it is put to use. So, once it is put to use, we need to preserve that timber and increase the life of the member so that we do not end up it destroying by external agencies like fungi, insect, etc. So, we may conclude stating that wood is a naturally, naturally occurring product obtained from tree trunks. Due to its formation, it can to take both tension as well as compression as because it is made of the xylems, the continuous fibrous carriers of water and minerals of a live tree. These bundle of fibers act together and help in taking both compression and tension. It has to be procured and processed to make it usable as a building material. It is similar to stone. You have to procure it, process it and then cut it into its proper sizes so that it can be used as a building material. And you have to be very careful that being an organic product, being a naturally occurring product, it is liable to decay due to attacks of insects, due to attacks of termites which is which are very common and it needs treatment. So, we use naturally occurring material as a building material with the caution that it needs to be treated, it needs to be seasoned, it needs to be procured properly from the right mature tree, from the right item 
and we can actually use it for our building purposes. At the same time, I would also say here that we have alternative materials made from the wood industry which also replace wood which we already talked that engineered wood and again we are bringing in bamboo for some sustainable structures built forms and that is also being practiced so we will try to highlight those also in this particular module with these i end today's lecture thank you